Okay guys, today we're going to do another tear down and open up of a GM body control module. This one, the 13506936, is out of the Chevrolet Sonic series. Uh, let me first show you where this is located on the vehicle and how to remove it, and then we'll come back and we'll open it up. It's underneath the driver's side of the Sonic, right over here, is where you'll find the body control module. And you can see it if you take the fuse access panel off. There's a clip like this on this bottom end, and there's one just like it on the top. You basically hold these guys out in order to release this guy from the bracket. And then once you get him released from the bracket, you can wiggle him out, bring him down, and disconnect the connectors and get him out. All right, guys, once you've got this out of the vehicle, opening it up is not that big of a deal. It's got like a vinyl or plastic type of hinge on the back probably a little fragile so be careful with it it's held in by four tabs two on each side and the easiest way to get these off is to take some type of flat tool maybe a small flat bladed screwdriver I'm just going to use a spudger tool here I'm going to work this under each tab until I can uh, get one of them to let go there you go, and then you kind of hold it with your finger, get the other one to let go. So now we've got this side cracked open, just kind of holding on to it so we don't let it close back together. We do the same thing over here. And then we get it open. And then to get the board out, so it doesn't open all the way, this clamshell, it just kind of opens this far in order not to break it. Just kind of take this board out. There's a couple of little pins in the back that are holding it. One, two. Those pins fit right into these holes that you see on either corner. So when you get this guy out, most of the devices are populated on this side. There's not much on this side here, but what we're looking for on this particular one is our usual type of 8-pin EEPROM device. And on this series, it's going to be a 95320 type of EEPROM. You can kind of already see it right there. So let's kind of zoom in. Hopefully this is going to uh, show up okay for you guys. But that's it right there. This guy right here. I'll see if I can get you a closer up view where you can see the writing. But it's a... a ST95320R series EEPROM and that's what we're going to be hooking up to to read today. So we're going to be doing the read like we usually do very inexpensively. I'm just going to be using my trusty handy dandy black edition CH34341A type of device with my Pomona type clip. I'll put a link in the description to these types of products. And uh, we're just going to pop that on there, hook it up to AS Programmer, and give it a read. So let's see how that goes. All right, guys, you can see we've got our board hooked up with our Pomona clip onto our 95320R EEPROM. And we're going to be using our trusty CH341A programmer. Works just fine. Remember that um, I'll link that up in the uh, corner there with the mods that I've done to read these 95 chips, but make sure you know you're going to put this in the 25 section of the ZIF socket rather than the, f the front here, which is for the 24s. You're going to have it in the back, which is for the 25s, which is where we would read a 95 series chip. So now let's just flip over to the programming software and let's give a read and let's understand what's in here. All right, guys, we've got everything hooked up. Now we've got AS programmer loaded. Let's go up and make sure that the device is set. Now we can see up here that it says 320R already, but if you want to know how that works, you come into SPI. We're going to go down to the ST brand. Let's see if I can lower this a little bit so you can see what's going on here. So we come down to the ST brand, and then we're just going to pick the 95 320R for that particular type of device. And then we're going to come back up and we're going to give it a read. All right, work just fine. These Pomona clips really hold on and they do a great job versus those cheapo Chinese ones. That's why I like to use them 
in place of the ones these things come with. All right, so we see a lot of information here right off the bat. Let's just kind of increase our magnification a little bit. Over here on the side, we see some long strings of numbers. This BS 21, 15, 223. Later down here, we see this 565, 4755 number. And then down here, we see this 83601 million something X number. Well, those actually correspond. If we go take a look at the cover of the body control module, we can see there's that 2115 22302 number, there's that 565 number, and there's that 83601 million something X number. Those are obviously part numbers or serial numbers or both for the manufacturer that supplied this body control module to General Motors. If we scroll down a little bit further, we can eventually see the vehicle's identification number here, the VIN starting in this location here. That's going to be 1G1JC6SH7G4113943. Get this cursor out of the way, three. And that matches exactly what you'd find on the VIN. It's not obfuscated or altered in any way. And then if we kind of scroll down a little bit more here, just moving this camera back a little bit, make sure you guys can see everything. You can see that most all of the EEPROM is used. There's a lot of information in here. And we can go all the way to the bottom of the read and find at the very bottom, there's another number down here, this 01624332. I'm not really sure what that is. It doesn't correspond to anything on the label of the body control module or the part number on the body control module, but it lets us see that everything in the chip has been utilized. Again, I'm lowering the camera here so you guys can see what we're talking about right down here is this number right here. Right, so that just shows you the chip is fully utilized. Now some other important information, if we go back to the top area, and I apologize guys if the camera is kind of picking up some interference from this old monitor I can see, not really sure why. don't really have any settings to have it be happier about it. So let's take a look at the mileage information. So the mileage information on this particular model, like always in GM vehicles, is stored in three locations. The first one here will be down at 0F7 in hexadecimal, hexadecimal address 0F7, and we can see this 3F54D4 value. If we scroll down a little further, we can find the second instance of the mileage at 166 in hexadecimal. So right here we see again the 3F54D4 value. And then the third and final instance of this VIN, we can scroll down a little bit further and we can find at 1 Charlie 4 in hexadecimal. And there again is the 3F54D4 value. The three of them together representing the obfuscated value for the mileage. Now I don't you know, recommend that you try to edit any of these things. My, my preference would be to transfer the EEPROM chip off the board and onto the original. That way you can affect the repair and you can retain all of this information not having to worry about editing it manually. If for some reason though the VIN is damaged, I'm sharing like the locations of this so you can know what you're looking at and the memory offsets that hold things that are pertinent to being updated, such as the VIN, such as the mileage, and such as the serial number and part number off of the body control module. What I usually do is I just take some chip quick, this material here, and use this to remove the actual EEPROM. It removes it in a few seconds. It's very effective, much better than a hot air gun in my opinion. Um, by contaminating the solder, with a lower melting point alloy, thereby making it very easy to melt and remove. And then I can then transfer that over, and then what I'll usually do is I'll transfer these cases so that the numbers all match on the outside, just in case you ever have to do a calibration update or something with the GM MDI tool and you want to have that scan tool be all happy with what it's seeing or if for some reason you have to take it back to the dealer perhaps a recall or something of that nature it makes for a nice clean repair regardless I hope this information helps you out if it did save you some time or it did save you some money go ahead and hit that like button and hit that thanks button too really would appreciate it 
If you've got questions or comments, leave them below. I do try to read and answer all of them. And again, as always, thanks for watching.